Good morning. It is June 20th, 2023. It's 11.30 a.m. here in Wisconsin, and that means it is time for another Will's Taco Tuesday. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, I am really excited about our lineup for today. Um, we've got two brand new uh, Wills vendor partners and two long-standing veteran Wills vendor partners. I think that's a fantastic balance, and I'm I'm really excited about what, what we're going to be able to see today. So I like to keep my intro short. So I am going to uh, introduce Thomas Haggerty, joining us from Bridgman Education. Thomas, are you ready to take the reins? Yeah, absolutely. Let me share my screen one second. Okay, and hopefully you can see the full screen now. Yes, yes. Okay, perfect. All right. So, um, yeah, without further ado, I'll kick off. Thanks to Jeff, Sarah, and the Wills crew for the opportunity. Um, and uh, thanks to all the fellow members for attending or and or watching this recording. So, um, in the next 15 minutes, I'm going to introduce to you guys our electronic resource for libraries, which is a visual resource called Bridgman Education. So what is Bridgman Education? Well, we have a lovely quote here from our friends at Library Journal, um, unreservedly, unreservedly recommending for all libraries serving anyone needing images. So what we have put together at Bridgman is a world-class archive of educational content, be it images, uh, stills, fine art, photography, sculpture, etc., as well as footage. And it really runs the gamut in terms of all kinds of educational content um, across all curriculums, across the syllabus. And the beauty of Bridgman Education is it's used by, by a wide and growing um, selection of customers. So be it school libraries, middle schools, uh, high schools, to higher education. Um, and we'll touch upon some of those partners as we go or current subscribers as we go. Um, what Bridgman Education offers you is the ability to research, search, view, download, and use in uh, projects, classroom projects, et cetera, lectures, you name it, any sort of educational use, frankly. And you're able to use an archive that's constantly growing, that currently stands at around 3 million images. Um, and what you can see on the screen here is really the sum of our parts. How are we able to provide you guys with access to these 3 million images within the e-resource that is Bridgman Education? And as you can see here, we do that by partnering with some of the major museums, galleries, auction houses from across the world. So it's a truly global um, enterprise and offering that we're able to provide you guys. And that enables us to have content on a wide variety of educational subjects. Thus, it's applicable and usable by a wide variety of stu students of all ages, of all knowledge backgrounds, um, of all stages on their educational journey. Um, as I said, we have kids from uh, middle schools um, using Bridgman Education, but we also have professors from some of the most prestigious colleges and universities globally using it for their lectures, for their research, etc. So it's a wonderful tool, and we'll dive into a little bit further as to how it can help you guys. Um, it's accessible. It is bridgmaneducation.com. Um, as I say, it's got 3 million images and footage uh, clips to search, review, and use. Um, it is constantly evolving and growing. We are constantly signing up museums, uh, galleries, auction houses, photography archives, even schools collections. Um, we are adding to the database on a constant basis. So the beauty of that is you don't have to wait. Um, if you do subscribe for a year, new stuff is constantly being added and uploaded as and when we have it available so it's a constantly evolving and growing resource um it is fully accessible it has all of the standards one would expect that you guys would require 
in terms of accessibility. Um, we even track usage statistics, of course. So um, if you guys wish to review how many of your uh, library users were actually accessing this database and, and utilizing it, we track that data and can provide that upon request to you guys. Um, and we are also more than willing to set you up with um, a trial account if you did wish to just check it out for a week or so before subscribing, we could certainly facilitate for that for you guys. Um, so what can you actually do with this, um, this e-resource? Um, I've mentioned the massive amount of content available that's growing. What you can do with that content is you can download the images, which you could use for your research, maybe a class project. Um, you can also create slideshows, um, which you could use in a, if you're a teacher for a class, maybe a, a university lecturer, you could utilize that. You can save the slideshows, edit them, um, reorganize the image uh, order within the slideshow, should you so wish. And we can show you a little bit of that um, shortly. Um, you can also prop um, an image should you wish to just focus on a detail. This tool, um, you have the capability to do that within the platform. You can zoom as well. And um, Bridgman has a lot of in-house picture researchers. So good news for librarians is we have excellent metadata and everything's been organized and cataloged accordingly to enable really powerful searching and research tools within the database. So what exactly is within the database? I mean, it's hard to set to, to really go through that fully within the full 15 minutes, but as you can see here, it really does run the full gamut of educational topics and classes. So thus schools, libraries, universities use us from a variety of departments uh, for a variety of projects because we do really have the full uh, gamut of uh, educational subjects covered. And we can quickly just go through these slides here just to give you a sense of the type of imagery per subject that we do have available. So again, I mean, you know, it's not just merely sort of art. You can see that we have modern photography, diagrams, etc. So it's really a, a comprehensive tool here in the types of content you have. You even have pictures of scripts. You have caricatures of directors as well as on set uh, photographs as well. History, of course, is one of Bridgman's real strong points, and you can see from the slides here just the, sh the sheer range of content that we have um, available. And again, it spans all periods of history. We started with an ancient history slide, but you can see that we have stuff right up until modern times. And that goes for all subjects, frankly, as we can see here. Um, performing arts as well as other subjects. Science in particular, we have a really strong amount of science offering uh, within the platform, as well as politics. Religion, I mean, we try and be as inclusive as possible. So we have content on all, all creeds, all faiths worldwide. And again, all mediums, be it contemporary art, vintage art, contemporary photography, etc. And of course, I mentioned performing arts, particularly strong in sort of theater, film studies stuff, as you can see from that slide. So just very quickly, um, just to run for a bit of functionality, which I've mentioned, but just to show you a little bit of what the platform is like. Um, we do have, um, as you can see, you can search once logged in. You can look at details of any images from your searches. Um, and you can also, should you wish, um, download. Um, an image file to use in your classroom project, lecture, whatever you're working on, just for your personal use. Um, again, it's very, very simple. You just simply, once logged in, hit the download icon on any desired image from your search, and there you have it right there. Pops up for you to use. Um, slideshows, I mentioned, very popular amongst university lecturers, as you can imagine, they can create and build 
and save and edit um, slideshows from uh, the archive and utilize them however they wish, frankly, in their, you know, in their classes, in their tutorials. Um, so it's very, very simple. Again, once logged in as a subscriber, you can simply um, just type away, do a general search, whatever you fancy it may be on any educational subject. The example here is Battle of Midway from World War II. So you get your array of images and um, yeah, you can add them to an existing slideshow by toggling across there. Once logged in, all, your, all of your slideshows are available to you to edit and utilize and they don't go away. Um, and yeah, you can just add and search any images that you fancy. You can drag them across. You can also select, use the select tool if you're wanting to add multiple images. Um, you will get a pop-up, it's intuitive. So if you've already added something, as you can see here, it will let you know that so that you're not duplicating anything. Um, and yeah, once you're happy with that and you've added everything that you want to add to your slideshow, you can then, um, you can then actually just via the view slideshow functionality, you can just go ahead and um, play that should you so wish um, to your class or whatever you're doing. You can also share a slideshow with a colleague or um, classmates or whomever you wish to. Um, you just simply need their email um, and you can share that um, with them. So once you're in the slideshow there, you have the ability, as I say, to share it. You also have the ability to download it again, should you wish to be able to just utilize it without logging into the platform, maybe. You can do that. It will just download as a file that you can play at your leisure whenever you wish. Um, and yeah, you just need, as I say, a colleague's email to do the sharing. Um, you can do it with multiple emails if you wish. Um, so yeah, it's a very powerful tool that is um, pretty popular, certainly amongst the higher education clients that use us, but also amongst um, you know middle school and high school kids as well for class projects, things like that. So here we are playing a slideshow through of everything that you've added to your selection that you wish to add. This is just a generic World War II one, which we added the uh, midway images to. Um, so you can see again, the range of quality. Um, we even have color as well as some, obviously a lot of black and white photography from the forties, of course, but um, you can see the full range of content as well here that we have available. Um, so yeah, moving on, I did mention, we also have the ability to crop images um, within the Bridgman Education platform. Any of the millions of images available, you can crop should you wish to. So. Um, it's quite simple. You just um, find an image that you're interested in. And, um, you know, should you decide to crop any, you certainly could. So it's very easy to do that. You just go to the crop icon there. And uh, as you can see, um, you can uh, name your crop essentially. Um, and then you can hit save once you've done that. And um, with these science images here as an example, Using the cropping tool, you can just go in on a detail here. Maybe some of that background's rather superfluous for your project and what you're trying to showcase. So you can just crop as you've seen here and then save it. And then that cropped image is saved within your um, slideshow there for the science project. So you can then refer back to it. And you can see there on the screen that it's um, clearly nicely cropped. And then um, we do also have a Zoom functionality, particularly useful for some very detailed archival images that we have available, such as here. Got some uh, vintage medieval manuscripts from our various partners worldwide. Um, if you're a researcher or you know, you're just really interested in the text here, you can just zoom in as you can see here. So maybe you want to look at the um, 
the Greek um, writing here to decipher the names of the respective disciples shown. So this is an example of how one could utilize the Zoom tool. So yeah, that was just some very um, basic functionality, but just to sort of bring the resource to life for you guys, as well as showcasing the content, we wanted to show some of the tools within it that you can utilize. And yeah, that was it. I know it's a very brief 15-minute uh, window, so I want to be respectful of other presenters and your guys' time. But um, that's my contact info there. Um, Jeff uh, can circulate it as well, perhaps after the call, if anyone is interested, uh, has any questions. I appreciate not everyone's live and some are watching the recording. So by all means, please feel free to reach out via email or click, give me a call. Uh, or via wills, just let me know, and I'll be happy to answer any questions you guys might have. And uh, I will stop sharing. Thank you so much, Tom. It's really a fascinating resource and something that um, we're really excited to be able to be partnering uh, with with you on. So thank you so much for sharing with us today. Yeah, likewise, my pleasure. Pleasure. Thanks again for the opportunity and for organizing this. Appreciate it. Thank you as well. All right, <laughs> we've thanked each other a lot. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's really it's really cool. I'm very excited to have you on board as a Wills vendor partner. All right, let me uh, I'm going to share my screen one more time just to sort of get us set for uh, our next uh, presenter. So joining us today is uh, another uh, new partner with Wills, um, Library Up who uh, is being represented here today by Rachel Perry. Rachel, are you ready to take over? I am. Can you guys hear me okay? Yep, you sound great. I'm going to stop sharing my screen, and then you should be able to uh, to have it. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. Is everybody, you can see this okay, Jeff? Yep, looks good. Okay. Great. Um, well, thank you, everybody, for having me on today, and I'm really, um, truly excited about this new partnership between Library Up and Wills. I've been fortunate enough to work with Wills in the past through my other jobs working for other library vendors over the past 13 years. Um, but this is my first time doing it as my new own business owner. Um, and today I just wanted to share with you guys what Library Up is, what we do. Um, and most importantly, I think what I would love to discuss the most is Ground News, which is our best selling service right now. Um, and I think it's the most relevant one to discuss today. So at Library Up, um, I decided really to go into business uh, myself because I wanted to draw on my 13 years of experience working with libraries. Um, I've been at Baker and Taylor. I worked for um, ProQuest. I've done work with Digital Public Library of America. I've done work with Bibliolabs. So all of these different um, library companies have always really been engrossed in the digital aspect of the services that libraries offer to their patrons. Um, so with that, I founded Library Up. Really, I wanted to be committed to really enriching the digital services that are offered by libraries, whether it's academic, school, or public. Um, we understand that with the fast-paced moving technology, it's really hard to, to try and be a full-time librarian and then also keep up with the marketing demands um, and needs that you have to keep up with in order to keep up with tech and, of course, tell your patrons about it. So we're really committed into partnering with libraries to helping them get the most out of the digital services they have, but also finding the right ones to use. So I'm just really excited to be here. Um, and I truly do admire the impact that, that I've seen over the past decade, um, specifically with Wills and what you guys have done in your state. Um, and I'm just excited to recognize you know, our potential partnerships and how they can align and how I can help you guys. Um, so as a fresh, dedicated player in the library landscape, <clears throat> I'm really excited to share some of the services that we have um, can now offer to you guys at an exclusive Wills discount. Um, and I really do, my goal here is to offer services specifically that really do further um, strengthen the role that libraries have in lifelong learning. Um, and after today's webinar, I just invite anybody to explore the website further to talk, to look more about the solutions, because today, like I mentioned earlier, I really want to focus on our best selling service right now, which is Ground News. Um, but before we delve into the meat of our presentation, I just thought I would do a little quick trivia 
um, for you guys or with you guys, I guess. Um, and feel free to chat your answers or just keep them to yourselves. But I just really wanted to start with a little trivia to get our brains thinking and, and questioning. Um, so according to a 2019 study by Common Sense Media, what percentage of teens get their news from social media? So again, feel free to chat the questions. If you guessed B, 54%, you're correct. Um, I really wanted to talk, test our knowledge on news consumption with some of these fun trivia questions. So you'll notice that theme throughout. According to a 2021 article published by the New York Times, what is the number one platform used today by Gen Z as search engines? So this may be shocking um, or scary or exciting, depends on, on your view, but the answer is TikTok. Um, and then according to a Stanford study, what percentage of college students struggle to evaluate the credibility and reliable credibility and reliability of online news sources. So, excuse me, I'm gonna go back. And that answer is, sorry about this guys. There you go, okay. So how many, you know, what percentage of students study with, study with on, evaluate credibility of online news resources? And that is 70%, which is very shocking, or at least for me, given that you would, um, the amount of information literacy uh, taught across campuses, you would think that number would be lower. Um, and according to a 2021 study from the Pew Research Center, what percentage of US adults primarily get their news from social media? And that is the most recent number, and that is at 48, still very, very high. That number has gone down slightly since 2016, but still very high. And then finally, according to NIU and a study out of Princeton, which generation is most likely to share fake news articles on social media? And again, the answer was a bit surprising that it would be A, baby boomers. Um, you would think that the younger generations having more of a social media presence would be more uh, inclined to do that, but that is not the case. And then lastly, um, for most people across all ages, countries, it doesn't matter what is their key objective in digital news consumption, and they found it is to get more reliable content. So thank you for humoring me in our trivia here, but with that, I would love to just go into ground news um, so we could talk about what it is and how it can help any, any news consumer, consumer of the news, really have a better understanding of what is reliable information, factual information, but do it in a way where they can keep it up, keep up with that in real time. So we're here to, of course, at Library Up help maximize libraries' digital services and, and again, finding the right ones to use. Um, I also truly believe it's not just about finding the right services, but it's also about executing a great rollout so you can ensure that your services integrate smoothly with what you're already doing with your community, your students, and your patrons. Um, and as a trusted hub of information and being key players in promoting information literacy and media literacy, we really feel that libraries have a unique opportunity to equip your patrons and your communities with necessary tools to navigate the digital news landscape effectively, especially considering that the majority of libraries will be voting institutions leading into our 2024 presidential election. So with that, I'm excited to introduce you to Ground News, which is a powerful, and I, I say this word revolutionary, but with, I really do mean it. It's, it's such a revolutionary way to, to consume the news. Um, and it's a, it's a solution that is designed to address the challenges posed by mis and disinformation that we are all very familiar with in today's media landscape. So with that, I'm just gonna give you a quick overview. Given our time constraints, we don't have time for a live demo, but I did wanna just show you a quick video. So, 
So a couple of things we're going to touch on that we touched on, but the trivia question. So with Ground News, you really get this platform that you can harness. They've, they've done a great job of harnessing the power of technology, but presenting it in a way um, with bias and factuality ratings that allows the user to decide for themselves based on these factuality and bias ratings, which source they're going to trust as, cred as a credible news source. Um, it really does give the user back control of their news consumption. And what it does is allows them to think critically about what they're consuming and the sources they're consuming, but do so in real time. Um, this is just an incredibly increasing uh, issue that people are having with the amount of news sources and publications that happen daily. It's really hard to assess all of that in real time using this information that you need to have a critical, you know, critical thinking to pick your own source. On top of that, ground news, it really um, helps you simplify your news engagement. So we saw that a lot of students feel overwhelmed by the amount of news that they are thrown at them on a daily basis. And I can speak from experience. That's probably true for most adults as well. If, you know, college students are feeling this way, then th so are high school students and students younger than that. But also so are people who are not digital natives, people who are not used to aggregating and sifting through thousands of publications daily. One of the things that is unique about Ground News is it does not use manipulative algorithms to show you articles based on what you've read previously. As, as we're aware, this is what causes echo chambers and this is what causes narrow viewpoints of the world is when people consume news from social media platforms or even other news aggregators such as Google News or Apple News, those are all using algorithms to show them what they want to see based on what they've read before. And they also use um, advertisement dollars in how they choose to show things. And that is another unique component of Ground News. They do not accept money from any advertisers in order to maintain neutrality when they are presenting the news in this way. The other thing that Ground News does really well is they offer a blind spot feed. We can see here on the right hand side. Um, and this just really does a great job of highlighting what is being reported or not being reported on certain sides of the political spectrum. And again, this allows the consumer to come to their own conclusions as to why that may be happening. And the, and the last thing I wanted to say here is that this is a really great tool to encourage readers to read in other people's shoes, if you will. So rather than being upset with somebody for having a specific view, you can really start to have engaged conversations uh, about the news um, and coming from it with a more empathetic kind of approach because you can see from, you know, being able to see all the news sources from across the spectrum, you can see why somebody may believe what they believe because you're actually reading within their shoes. The other thing that Ground News does really well is it sorts all of the related articles um, and organizes them into one place. So again, you're not left going, is this breaking news or is just this what this news organization is calling breaking news, right? Every article that is reported on through that day is organized into one place. So you can see one article at a time, but then choose from every single news source that is reporting on that article. So you can see in the screenshot here that this is uh, one story, but they have combined that story that's been published by 48 sources. Again, you can compare factuality ratings, bias ratings, um, how polarizing the headlines are and why they may have polarizing language versus those that do not. So with Ground News, the, the user experience is really unlike any other. Um, instead of having manipulative algorithms to guide you, you get a, a neutral space um, that enables readers to reliably consume the news based on their own critical thinking skills. So this is the only platform on the market that uses the technology to deliver more diverse news sources, but in a way that empowers its users to evaluate the sources in real time. This is probably, I think, my most um, the feature I like the most is ground news is really everywhere the readers are. So in our trivia, we talked a lot about how uh, the, the consumption of news on social media and how prevalent that is within every age demographic. So if your readers are used to getting their news from Facebook or Instagram or Reddit or even Twitter, um, ground news has an overlay using the browser extension where you can still see these 
these facts, uh, factuality ratings and bias ratings, even if you're consuming those articles from social media. So it's a really amazing tool to not only, you know, kind of sort through the news and be in, feel less overwhelmed about it, but also to uncover media bias that's in your very own news feed. I am going to keep going here. Uh, the other thing, while you just saw on that screenshot, is ground news. We not only provide data on factuality and bias ratings, but we also show data on ownership of these publications. So who owns this newspaper? And then you can start thinking, why would they own this newspaper? Does this have any meaning that this person owns this newspaper or that this company owns this newspaper? So the, the, we are serving all up in one place, all of the information a user would need to really think about the bias of this source. And just something to note that the goal is never to eliminate bias at Ground News, uh, because we know that's just not a realistic uh, goal. Uh, everybody has bias, uh, personal bias, so that's an impossibility. But what we want to do is present the news in a neutral way, so the user, the consumer of the news, can assess that bias based on their own thinking and critical thinking skills and what they want to determine as, as factual and uh, you know, reliable. So with Ground News, we have, I'm very excited to share that we are rolling it out this fall at our um, local college here in Jacksonville, Florida. And as a mom with two kids in the school system in Florida, um, having access to information and being able to, to decide if that information is reliable and factual yourself is very important. Um, so this is why I, I'm so excited about Ground News because I really do feel it is going to be such an instrumental tool to help better inform the world. Um, and it's now been named app of the day in 38 countries globally um, and has several different uh, languages that you can use it in and also a map feature so you can read the news globally by just clicking on the location. So why why ground news? I think this is so key, um, especially heading into the 2024 uh, US presidential election. You can really provide your community with practical tools to sort through the fire hose of information they receive daily from news publications. It helps empower users with bias and factual error ratings for any news story anywhere. Um, and it also can really diversify your community's news diet with these, uh, like the map feature and, and reveal different narratives that they may not see in their daily news feeds. And again, it meets students and any users where they are by the tools that fit seamlessly into their daily news consumption, that being on social media. Um, and then, of course, you can empower your community to be discerning consumers of news and informed participants in our democratic society. So if, if media literacy and, and uh, you know, an informed voter demographic is important to you guys or your mission that you're working on now, I would very much encourage you guys to take a look at Ground News. Um, and I have to say, all of my years of pricing and ebook sales and all of this stuff, I have to say the price point is amazing um, for the, the value that it can provide to your community. And Jeff, that's that's it for me. Thank you so much, Rachel. I think it's a, a really exciting new tool, a uh, resource that I think everybody should be looking at. Thank you so much for giving us. Uh, Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. My pleasure. All right. Uh, I'm going to very uh, kind of quickly share our, my screen one more time here so that we can get set up for our next presenters. Uh, so jo oops, went a little too far ahead. Here we go. Uh, joining us uh, today from Botanica Education, I think we actually have two folks, um, Christopher and Joshua. Uh, are you are you guys on? You ready to take over? Yep, we are here. We are. All right, fantastic. I'm going to stop sharing my screen, uh, which will let you take the reins. All right. All right. Well, thank you for having yeah. us, Josh. I'll let you get us okay. started. Sorry. So, no, I appreciate it. Um, thank you guys for having us. Um, Botanica Education, you guys do get some of our products through um, uh, Badgerlink. And so uh, 
We're, we'll touch a little bit on that, um, but we're really going to focus on image quest. That is something that uh, you do not receive through Badger Link, but you will, uh, you can get from uh, Wills. So very good uh, platform with images and, and content that can create and make projects uh, 10 times better. So really, we're going to focus on that, but we will tell you a little bit about our other products that we do have available. And we might touch a little bit on academic also if we have enough time. Cool. So I'll jump in. Um, as Joss mentioned, we do have a handful of products that are available through Badger Link. So if you're in K-12 or if you're in the, the library space, um, you do have access to Britannica School which has all of our Britannica encyclopedia resources for K through 12 in three different learning environments. So there is an elementary, a middle and a high school learning environment. Um, you also have Britannica library, which takes our Britannica encyclopedia content and puts it into a library space. So we have an early childhood and we have a reference center uh, for those articles, media as well. Um, and then you have access to Britannica Escolar and Moderna, which is our Spanish language resources. Um, again, providing uh, native written Spanish. So it's not like we take our Britannica articles and then translate them into Spanish, um, but they are all written and edited by our Spanish editorial team. Um, so those are available through Badger Link. What I am going to do is show you Britannica Image Quest. So as Josh mentioned, uh, this product here uh, does provide kind of a, a really helpful way uh, to get Britannica um, images uh, as well as licensed images from some of our partners. Um, so over three and a half million images that are rights cleared for non-commercial use. We also have video clips, we have galleries, and we have sharing functionality that's recently been added. So if you've used ImageQuest in the past, either through Wills or through a school district, um, there's a lot of new stuff here. So we want to highlight a little bit about what this looks like. Um, so I'm just going to do a very quick guided tour of Britannica ImageQuest um, and share with you a couple of the key features here. Um, so this is our homepage. A couple things to point out. You can translate all of the content here into different languages. Um, so we have different versions of English, either UK or Australian English, um, as well as French, Japanese, Portuguese, Spanish, Turkish, or Welsh. That will translate all of the content uh, in ImageQuest into that chosen language. We also have uh, different galleries, media partners, or project ideas. I'll go through each of these and share a little bit about what they look like. Um, and I'll demonstrate a My Britannica account and how you can expand that and get a little bit more out of creating albums and sharing them with your uh, students, peers, colleagues, et cetera. Um, so this is our landing page here. Um, you can always do a quick search. So if you want to see anything that is associated with the state of Wisconsin, you can go ahead and search. Uh, you see this search brings back 2,900 images, uh, some clip art. We have images, anything tagged with Wisconsin, um, you would be able to find in here. Uh, this is, again, all these images are licensed for non-commercial use. So you can use them in student projects. You can use them in presentations. Um, you cannot print them and put them into a publication that you are profiting off of. Um, but as long as you're using it for educational purposes, uh, you are not violating the copyright of these images. A Couple things to point out here on the search page, you can organize how it looks. So if you wanna see a more condensed view or if you wanna see the grid expanded a little bit, um, you can select images and you can share them to Google Classroom. You can save them to Google Drive. You can print out those images. Uh, you can download them to your device or you can email them to any person uh, that also has access to Britannica ImageQuest. Within <clears throat> This search here, you can also search by specific media partners. So we have 64 media partners that we license these images from. Um, if you are familiar with, let's say Getty images and you only wanna see images that are coming from Getty, you can filter to see those as well. If you're looking to find a specific shape, let's say you need to fit something that's gonna fit into a square image on your slides, 
uh, you can search by that. Or if you want to just see the clip art, you can see those as well. We also have videos. Let's see if anything comes up here. So in Wisconsin, we have two videos here. These are recently added into ImageQuest. So if I click on a video, you can see here we have a description. We have all of the credit here, the copyright information, um, keyword searches that led to this particular video. The other thing to point out, a lot of these videos do not have sound. If I click on this, you'll see there's no sound here. This will show you just kind of the overflow of the river here, but it'll give you kind of a, a very quick clip here. Uh, most of our videos are between about 15 seconds to a minute long. You can again download these to your device. You can share them through uh, a multitude of different ways, whether it's email, Google Classroom, or Microsoft Teams. You can click here on the citation tool, and this will give you the citation information. So you can select MLA, APA, Harvard, or Chicago style, copy and paste that into a bibliography or a work cited. And if you want to see kind of the, the best of the best, um, so we have a new gallery feature that's been added here, uh, where if you're looking for popular search terms, you can search to see galleries that kind of highlight uh, hand curated versions or the best of the best images here. So if I click on all image galleries, let's say I go to animals and plants, and I really want to see butterflies. Instead of searching butterflies in the search bar and getting a number of, you know, however many thousands of different images back, uh, we've kind of selected 70 images here that are kind of the best representation um, of these popular search terms. Again, for any of these, if you click on them, you get a larger image here. All of the credits down here at the bottom, again, all of the tools that we talked about where you can download, save, share, uh, cite all of that good stuff here. And we also have video galleries that do the same thing with all of our video content as well. A um, couple other things to share. Um, so I want to share kind of how you would save media. So let me go back and do my search for Wisconsin here. So if I wanna save an image, if I wanna put this into my, um, my media account, <clears throat> I can click here where it says add <clears throat> excuse me, sorry about that, uh, where it says add to my media. Um, you can either save this image so that you can refer, refer back to it later, or you can create a album. And I'll go back to my search term. I'll pick a couple other images here. And I will add them to my media as well and add them into this Wills album. Um, so when I go up here into my, my menu, I can click over here to see my Britannica. I've got my saved media and my albums. Here's the album that I've just created for this Wills consortium. Uh, you can add notes to these. You can add in questions if you are sharing this with students um, and you want them to think critically about a certain um, image here. It'll tell you how many images or videos. You can add notes to the album as a whole. And then if I want to share this, I can go ahead and click on share album, copy the link, or I can select to share this via email as well. Um, anyone who has access to Britannica Image Quest, if you copy the link and give it to them, they'll click on it. It will take them directly to this album. Last thing to show, and I'll turn things back over to Josh uh, in the menu here. When I clicked on project ideas, we just have some ideas here for how you can use Britannica Image Quest to really enhance learning and enhance the projects that you're doing with students. Um, so if I go here and I say, I wanna look at this image dictionary, we'll have a quick project summary, talk about some of the learning objectives, um, a description, and then we have some different examples here. So at the elementary level, you could use this project uh, to cover concepts, patterns, and number systems. For middle school, social studies, you might be looking at ancient Egypt. And if I click on that, you get a expanded version of what this project can look like with your students. 
So I will kick things over to Josh and he will he will bring us home here. I know we're we're close to the end of our time. So Josh, I'll kick it back over to you and you can talk a little bit about uh, academic and some of our other Britannica stuff. Perfect. All right. Thank you, Chris. Um, thank you, guys. I know we are uh, coming up on the time, so um, I'll make this quick. I am going to. You guys are a... okay. You started. A, we we started you a little bit late, so don't feel like you have to rush. Okay. Perfect. Thanks, Jeff. So I um, I'm going to share the link to our website in the chat. Um, that way, you guys have the ability to look at all of our solutions, um, and. I will share the, my screen and kind of take you through a quick overview of uh, Britannica Academic. So let's get that started. All right, so we have uh, Academic here. Um, we have articles available, images and videos and biographies. Our research tools, which is great for our academic researchers, uh, for uh, not only for uh, projects in the classroom, but also um, for our academics, our teachers, our, our staff that, that are creating and, and doing research materials, uh, dissertations, thesis, all that stuff. We have everything that you would need here. Um, so just kind of like what Chris had talked about before with uh, ImageQuest, your research up here in the corner, you do need to sign in and you could sign in on a personal account using your Google um, or using um, uh, another email address or another uh, way to, to access. So you have your resource packs and your favorites that you can utilize just like Chris showed. Um, and our cool little research tools, World Atlas, right? Our almanacs or World Atlas, original sources, that is like really, Encyclopedia Britannica has been around for over 150 years. So these are like our original complete books and, and uh, images that, that are available to you with that. So we have that, we have uh, resource packs that you guys can keep all your stuff in, compare your countries, which is a nice tool, right? Because if you're doing research, you can compare your countries, database resources, um, and then you have your world fact book for your statistics. So we have everything that you need all in one spot for uh, research projects and papers. Uh, popular topics that come up, we have it all right here. Um, and then our featured journals and periodicals, who they come from. You can see that they come from many reliable sources. You do have our uh, Merriam-Webster, which is also part of Britannica Education and, Britann and Encyclopedia Britannica. You have access to the dictionary and the source here. Uh, primary sources also. So you have a whole bunch of uh, information all in one spot right here available to you. Uh, news articles that have been revised. So really, you have a whole bunch of um, information that is right at your fingertips. So if you just want to look at something, and I just picked brain aneurysm because um, I've been watching a lot of uh, uh, like kind of podcasts of sports, and they've really been talking about uh, football players and, and the concussions and kind of how, how they've been going through all of that. And I know, you know, being in Wisconsin, Green Bay is a big the go pack, right? And so that's a big deal. Uh, so you can see just for the articles, you kind of have your basic articles that you'll get discussing about the mammals, uh, you know, and all, all just a whole bunch of different areas or brain aneurysms or brain can come up in. But where you really want to look is when you go to more. You have your journals and periodicals, websites that you could uh, go to, our primary sources and ebooks, year in review, um, and our dictionary and thesaurus. So I'll just go to the, the images or the journals and periodicals. So this is sorted by your relevance, but you could do it by author, publication date, uh, most recent to oldest, and oldest to most recent. I know that is important to researchers, uh, and so having the most up-to-date is probably the most uh, 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 kind of beneficial for you. So you can see where it was public, uh, when the publication happened, kind of gives you a synopsis. You could view the PD, uh, PDF version, or you could open it up. 
and you have all the information you have, need here. You can share it. Okay, you could send it to your favorites. You could print it out, and you could also translate it, right? So you could translate it into all of these different languages if needed. So that's a, an also a very uh, good feature. And you could also make the font bigger or smaller here. Okay, so we have these features here that are great with the academics for research and wanted to show you that that's also available to you guys um, through Wills. Does anybody have any questions? Thank you so much, uh, Joshua and Christopher. I haven't seen any questions come through yet. So um, I, uh, I will say what I, uh, what I always say, which is if we hear questions from members, we will be sure to uh, ping you on them or relay them uh, over to you so that you can, uh, can answer them. And, and thank you again for presenting with us. That today. sounds good. And also I wanna remind everybody that we do offer a two free, uh, two week free trial of all the products available. So if you want to test it out, just contact Jeff. He'll contact me and I'll get you set up. Fantastic. Thanks again, Joshua. All right. I'm going to share uh, my screen one more time here to get us all set up for our fourth and final presenter for the uh, for the day and actually for our, our whole kind of six month session of Taco Tuesdays. Um, I'm happy to be bringing up next, uh, Chelsea Tharp joining us from Bio One. Chelsea, are you ready to take on uh, the yes. session? All yep, right. I am. Thank you. Sure thing. Okay. Okay. Um, so thank you to everyone who's joining us today. My name is Chelsea Tharp, and I'm the Associate Director of Sales here at Bio One. Um, so uh, many of those listening may already have bio and complete in your collections or be familiar with our products and some may not. So um, I'll go through everything today that we have to offer in the bio and digital library. And thank you, Jeff, for organizing this all. Okay, I'll start um, with a little bit about bio one as an organization. So bio one is an innovative nonprofit collaborative supporting sustainable scholarly publishing. We were founded by librarians, publishers together with the aim of ensuring a sustainable scholarly ecosystem. Uh, at BioOne's inception back in uh, 1999, we started out by offering our flagship product, BioOne Complete. Um, and now as of 2023, we've expanded to include eBooks and an archive, which are all now held under the BioOne Digital Library umbrella. So the Bio and Digital Library is a community-based platform that provides global distribution for more than 350 journals and eBooks in the biological, ecological, and environmental sciences. And to date, Bio One has returned over $67 million to um, our small nonprofit society and independent publishing partners, and 60% of subscription dollars are returned each year as royalties to these nonprofit publishing partners. Um, and so I'll touch more on, um, we have three main products within the Bio One Digital Library. So I'll start by sharing more about our flag flagship product um, called Bio One Complete. So as a trusted, affordable, and mission-aligned resource for scientific research, Bio One Complete is a valuable addition for libraries and institutions. Bio and Complete is a curated collection of independently published subscribed and open access titles, many not available anywhere else, and it comes in the form of an annual subscription. Um, with 218 titles from 156 independent society publishers and content spanning over 50 years, Bio and Complete offers comprehensive coverage of fields such as agriculture and agronomy, environmental sciences, entomology, veterinary sciences, and zoology. Um, and 60% of subscribed titles are available in XML exclusively through Bio and Complete. So a single subscription to Bio and Complete can benefit many users at your institution. Scientists, faculty, and students from a variety of disciplines can find authoritative 
current content on a wide range of subjects. Um, also for current subscribers who may be listening, um, we're proud to welcome the addition of Insect Systematics and Diversity to the collection for 2023. This is a high caliber title from the Entomological Society of America and addresses not only entomology, but biodiversity conservation, invasive species, and agriculture with interdisciplinary topics like climate change, invasive species, and agriculture and plant sciences. So that's already joined the collection um, for 2023. And we'll have updates about the collection for 2024 coming um, in August. Um, and here's a good snapshot of our journal citation report data. So within the subscribe collection, 80% of titles have an impact factor and bio and complete boasts high category concentrations, especially in ornithology, entomology, and biodiversity conservation. So in addition to the annual subscription, the Bio Incomplete Archive provides essential flexibility for our library partners as well. Um, so this is kind of our second product that launched um, at the end of 2021. So it's been fully available for a year now. Um, and whether you're looking to access Bio Incomplete content for the first time, or you wish to enhance your institution's permanent holdings, this high quality database puts a critical mass of bioscience content at your fingertips permanently. Um, the Bioincomplete Archive secures perpetual platform access to over 170 titles from more than 100 independent society publishers representing specialized scientific communities. And this collection includes upwards of 140,000 articles. Um, so we have a five-year rolling front wall. So currently the collection goes through December 31st, 2018. Next year, we'll have content through 2019 and so on. Um, this rich backfile content also retains its scientific relevance over time. 68% of bioincomplete usage is to content over five years old, and the average cited half-life of included titles is eight years. So um, our backfile is very rich and still widely used. Um, and the Bioincomplete Archive allows libraries to utilize one-time funds to provide continued access to Bioincomplete. So if you're someone who's already subscribed to Bioincomplete too, we'll, we'll prorate pricing and content of the archive based on your existing holdings because as a current annual subscription, um, subscriber, you maintain post ca cancellation access to all content published during the years of your active subscription. And then on to our new um, product, which is actually launching this very month. So we're working on it now. Um, so BioN is excited to extend our partnership with the Entomological Society of America to deliver a collection of 160 plus newly digitized eBooks serving the educational, professional, and scientific needs of entomologists, zoologists, and researchers in related disciplines. Launching this month, the ESA eBook collection is the inaugural collection from the Bio and eBooks program. So this is kind of our first um, pilot launch of doing eBooks, and we're hoping um, to partner with other publishers in the future and, and do more if it turns out to be successful. So. Um, this, again, will officially launch at the end of the month. We're already taking orders, um, and anyone with end-of-year funds from 2023, too, we're happy to accommodate. Um, I've listed out some of the subject matter here, and there's an introductory title list online as well. Um, and in general, pricing for academic institutions falls between $3,000 and $9,000 for the one-time purchase of the eBooks. Um, and in general, we love working with Wills. We love working with all of our consortia. I think I have about 26 consortial partners in um, North America alone. Um, so we offer um, some nice discounts through the consortia. You can see 10% on the annual subscription and then 5% off of any of our um, one-time purchases. So, um, 
Okay. I had mentioned post-cancellation access. Um, also, Bio One follows very flexible licensing terms and policies with no contracts required in order to start your subscription. Um, so libraries are able to begin a subscription at any time and will simply prorate it to align with Will's April 1st renewal cycle if, um, if need be. And our pricing is based on a tiered system according to FTE um, with those additional discounts listed. Even at our maximum rate, buy one completes average per active title cost remains under $200, making it 93% less than the commercial average. Um, so we're happy to, to provide affordable pricing and, and, um, and we also have free trials available. So if anyone's interested in testing out any of the products within the bio and digital library, we're happy to set that up. And then I was just going to end with some resources here. And depending on how much time we have, I'm happy to share um, one of those here. This is our um, article collection archive. So we have um, a monthly collection that goes out called Bio and Vista that anyone can sign up for, whether it's researchers, faculty, librarians. Um, and we essentially just curate special collections based on subject um, specialties. So I would encourage everyone to check it out. We just did one on Earth Day, genomics, um, One Health and Public Health. And we also have a series of other top and trending research going out and then other special specialized um, collections as well based on, um, for example, we did a coronavirus one. So um, based on current, current events and that sort of thing. Um, and then I think that's it. So if anyone has questions, they can, here's my contact information or you can ask in the chat. But thank you so much. It looks like we are at time. So I will end the show. Uh, <laughs> thank you to uh, uh, Chelsea and to all of our presenters today for joining us. Uh, thanks for those of you who have attended live and for those of you who uh, have uh, are watching the recording right now. Um, if you have any questions about any of the resources you saw today, please feel free to reach out to uh, any of us here at Wills, or we will include contact information for all of our presenters uh, in the follow-up message uh, that includes uh, the link to the recording. So I mentioned that uh, early on in the session that we have um, uh, we're we're booking our Taco Tuesdays uh, six months uh, at a time, and so uh, we started this round in January, where we have come to the end of our current. Uh, Taco Tuesday session, but we are going to be starting all over again in July. So those of you watching uh, the recording or here live, please uh, keep an eye out for announcement of the new dates and the new slate of presenters. And those vendor partners who are, are here today or who may also be watching the recording, keep an eye out for messaging for me about how to sign up for uh, another Taco Tuesday session uh, in the future. Thanks again to everybody for uh, presenting and for watching and for listening to me. <laughs> and I hope you all have a really great uh, rest of your day and um, uh, a good summer break if you're on break. <laughs> all right. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day. Thanks, Jeff. Bye.